Esther, you're a well-known educator. You're here at the conference because of educational issues. What do you think the big problems are in education that we need to overcome? Well, I think that the main problem in education today that we need to overcome is, is the role of the classroom teacher. How do we change that role of the classroom teacher so that teacher provides more opportunities for students to have independent learning? What's wrong with the role of the teacher now? What is the teacher doing wrong today? Well, so the majority of teachers today, um, like over 70%, lecture full time. So they lecture, the student takes notes, and then the student takes a test on what was the material. So the question is, how does that result in the kinds of skills that we need for students today? How do students learn how to collaborate, think independently, get information off the internet, get information in their communities when most of the information is just given to them in lecture and then the main thing they're supposed to do is really to um, memorize and give it back to the teacher. So is the problem that the teachers themselves are not properly trained and if they were, this problem could be solved? I would say that the majority of teachers are teaching the way that they were taught a hundred years ago. Um, it's a tradition. What would it take to change the teaching style? Well, one thing would be, I think we need to provide incentives for teachers to, to change. Uh, we need to also recognize that a classroom that's noisy where students are interacting all the time is considered a good environment. Um, the, the model that is in most people's minds is that students are sitting politely, quietly in rows and then raising their hand and then interacting. The interaction is primarily between the teacher and the student. You know, teacher asks a question, student responds, other students listen to the response. Um, this is an old model that worked pretty well actually prior to the technical revolution, but doesn't really work well today. Is this new teaching style dependent on computer technology and every child having a computer at his desk? Um, yeah, it's pretty much dependent on computer technology. And so, or it doesn't necessarily have to be a computer, it could be one of those little tablet things. Or um, actually most schools ban cell phones in the class. Um, and I know this is a difficult thing for a lot of teachers, but in fact, um, you know, kids can find a lot of information out on those cell phones. You know, outside of classroom, have you noticed how they can find out right away where their friends are and what's going on? And uh, I mean, they can do that with factual information as well, probably faster than you and me. <laughs> now, in a place like Palo Alto, where most people are well educated, uh, I can see how a lot of interaction in the classroom would be helpful. What about an area where kids are not well disciplined, where they're not well disciplined at home? Uh, if you just let them do what they want in the classroom, will that produce good results? So actually, I'm, I'm not saying that the entire classroom period, so you have a 50-minute period typically, you don't have to have the entire classroom period like that. So of the 50 minutes, if you had 35 minutes where the teacher was doing some kind of direct instruction and the rest of the time where the students were given some opportunity, or you could have like one day there's some kind of lecture, the next day there's projects, you know, Kids just need to have some kind of a, a reason for why they're studying, why they're learning that. And if they can see that reason in reality and understand how that relates to what they're learning, then they get motivated. So in low-income areas, the kids are never given this opportunity. One of the keys to a good education for kids, if you just think about it in the private school sector, you send your kid to a private school because what's happening in that classroom? The teacher respects the kid. The teacher gives the kid a lot of opportunity to, to mm -hmm. speak and they trust the kid. This mm -hmm. is not happening in the public schools. So if we can give kids some respect and some trust mm -hmm. and allow them to work on some projects with their peers, mm -hmm. things that they're interested about, the, the idea is to get those kids interested does it look like this is going to happen, or are you going to meet some resistance, perhaps? Um, I think there's probably going to be some resistance. Uh, so I have this very large journalism program at Palo Alto High School, uh, which I helped to, which I actually founded, and um, so there are about 600 kids now mm -hmm. electing to take a writing program. And so, wh why would kids do that? You know, what's in it for them? And the answer is, the main thing is respect. 
and trust. Mm -hmm. They get to write about topics of interest to them. So, okay, they're writing about whatever they're interested mm -hmm. in. What are they learning? What's the byproduct? Well, they're learning technology because we have websites. They're learning how to produce magazines and newspapers. They're learning how to communicate effectively. Mm -hmm. How about grammar, punctuation, all the mm -hmm. things we're trying to teach. So instead of worksheets, what do I do? I give them opportunities to apply what mm -hmm. they might have learned, and then they're, of course, interested.